given the seven days we've had, it's International Women's Week, with public anger, great public anger at the place of women in society. What were the police thinking last night? Well, first of all, can I just reflect on the fact that this has been an unimaginable week uh, for the family and friends of Sarah Everard. The, the loss that they are suffering is beyond our comprehension. And I think in response to that, the reaction that we've seen from women across the country in terms of their own experiences of sexual harassment in the street and, and violence and, and being frightened to walk in our streets is also very, very shocking and very, very upsetting. And so Please last behave night, the way they did. It, through the day, we saw many people come to that particular part of Clapham Common to pay their respects, to lay a flower around the bandstead. And of course, the majority of them um, uh, had a peaceful experience. Now, the scenes that we've seen uh, later on in the day, in the evening, are very upsetting. And uh, I, I take it very seriously. The Home Secretary takes it very seriously, which is why she has asked the Metropolitan Commissioner for a report on what has happened last night. Uh, take a look at this image, if, you, if you're able to. Um, it's the image of the young girl who is uh, on the ground with the police officers on top of her. Is, is that the state of British policing today? I, I, you'll have to forgive me, I, I don't have a screen here, but I imagine, I hope I'm thinking of the right photograph because I've seen the photograph both on social media and of course in newspapers. Uh, and, and that photograph is something that the police will have to explain in their report to the Home Secretary. I think you know, pl any policing of large events is, is difficult at the best of times, but we're in the middle of a pandemic with all of the rules that flow from that. And of course, last night, people were very, very upset. There was a great deal of emotion, completely understandably. Uh, and uh, the police, being as they are operationally independent, will be having to explain that to the Home Secretary in their report. You say it's difficult to, to police in a pandemic. Um, if we think back to the images that we saw uh, a week ago when uh, there were football uh, celebrations in the streets up in Glasgow after Rangers win, uh, hundreds and hundreds of men walking through the streets, essentially just being allowed to by the police. This was a very small group of women who were confined onto a bandstand. I was there, it was cold. It was dark. People were petering away. What was the what was the rationale behind going in to to stop that? Well, uh, as I say, um, it is for the police to make these decisions. Uh, often in the moment uh, when they're policing major events. But I, I, I'm pleased that you were able to go. I myself chose to uh, take part in the virtual vigil. We found, I hope between us, we found many different ways of marking uh, our respect and marking our concerns about the issues that have been raised this week. But uh, as I say, the Home Secretary has required a report from the Met Commissioner to look into these. And, and that's right, because the police have to be operationally independent. I don't think anyone would want a scenario whereby politicians are directing the police. But it is also right that they are held to account by democratically elected politicians and that they explain uh, their actions to the wider public. And indeed, just today, I've seen that the borough commander has acknowledged uh, on social media that uh, last night was very difficult. They're in a very difficult place at the moment. And so I do hope that we'll be hearing uh, explanations uh, in the hours and days to come. I mean, another report, Pretty Patel says, uh, I mean, I can tell you that the woman there last night didn't want another report. They wanted something done. Do you, do you think our police force is sexist? Do you think what you saw last night was sexist policing? Well, actually, if I may just, um, uh, just take you up on that point about action. Um, we, in response to the outpourings of anger and experiences that we've heard this week, 
on Friday uh, we reopened the public survey that has been feeding into and shaping our new forthcoming national strategy on tackling violence against women and girls. This, was, this is the largest ever survey that's ever been conducted to tackle violence against women and girls and already by the time of the deadline we had 15,000 responses from members of the public. I'm really pleased to say that since we reopened it at 6pm on Friday we've had a further 20,000 responses from the public. So look, if you want change, if you want your voices to be heard, we are listening and please, please put your uh, views, your experience into the public survey. If you look at the gov.uk website, it's there. Please tell us your views and experiences because then you can help us shape this strategy that we're creating and that will be published later this year. But there will be there will be a lot of women saying and saying that these are, are simply platitudes. You know, we've, we're going to talk to Vera Baird in a short while, the Victims Commissioner. Uh, she has uh, put together a number of reports about failings in the criminal justice system, in the police service towards women. Uh, it's another report, isn't it? Um, Priti Patel is the Home Secretary. Has she not got any ideas of her own? Why is she asking the whole population to come up with a strategy for her? This is a problem. Women in society women and the society. levels of crime that they are victims to, that we are well aware of. We need action, not more research. And in fairness, you have seen action from this government. At the moment, we have the domestic abuse bill going through Parliament. I have led on that. This is a groundbreaking piece of legislation that uh, is really changing the way that victims uh, of domestic abuse are treated uh, and, in addition, perpetrators of domestic abuse are treated. This is real action that will have an, a huge impact on the 2.3 million victims of domestic abuse that we know uh, live in this country. But that is in violence in the home. The next step now is for us is us looking at violence on the street and other forms of violence against women and girls. Uh, there is a huge range of uh, different crimes that disproportionately affect women and girls, from sexual harassment in the streets through to FGM, forced marriage uh, and stalking. The government is absolutely working on all of this and the national strategy that is being published this year is because we want to set this um, for local commissioners, the police, councils, etc. across the country. We want this to be the, the guide, if you like, um, to tackling these sorts of crimes. I really don't think it's fair to uh, sort of make those allegations that you're making. I totally understand why, in the spirit and the, and the emotion of the uh, moments uh, this week that the people are thinking that but believe you me this comes from the very top the Prime Minister is personally committed to this the Home Secretary is and I am uh, this is a huge piece of work and we want to listen to members of the public my goodness if we weren't listening to members of the public I think you would rightly be criticizing us actually uh, and some well, of the experiences well, that we've heard this week absolutely must be reflected in our national strategy going forward well, well, let's move away from, from, as you say, the spirit and the emotion of the week. Let's just look at, at brutal facts. Over the last 11 years of the Conservative government, the rate of rape, so this isn't the, the rate of, this is the, the rape of rape charges, so this isn't people going to court and being found guilty or not guilty, it's the percentage of people who actually get charged by a police officer with rape, it's 1.4%. That's happened under the Conservative government. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, Anthony Williams, given a five-year sentence for throttling his wife in lockdown, Apparently, he just flipped. Uh, also, uh, in the last couple of weeks, a man was spared jail after dragging a woman to the ground and molesting her. Part of his defence in court was, if he went to jail, he would lose his job. These are crimes against women, and women look at what happens when they report crimes, and they say that this government, this police force, this justice service isn't serving us. And we hear, we absolutely hear that, and what is more, we want it to change, which is why, as part of, uh, on top of the work that we're doing with the domestic abuse bill and the uh, tackling violence against women and girls strategy, we are also conducting an in-depth review into the criminal justice system from end to end when it comes to rape and sexual assault investigations. Uh, there are, we, it is absolutely in-depth. I mean, two of the examples you've given there, the uh, sentence and the, um, well, both of the sentences, of course, 
course, those are matters for judges. The judiciary are independent of government, but that has not stopped us looking at their role in the course of this end-to-end -end rate review. It is absolutely critical that uh, every single part of the criminal justice system plays its role in ensuring that perpetrators are brought to justice. And by way of uh, example, only tomorrow we are bringing forward the Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill, and one of the most important measures in that, as far as I'm concerned, is that we will be increasing the minimum sentence that serious and violent offenders serve in prison. At the moment, they're let out at half, uh, halfway through their sentence. We're increasing that to two-thirds because we absolutely understand the public's horror that violent and sexual offenders should be let out of jail um, uh, at an early stage in their sentence. So that is just one example. We're also making very real change changes to what are called sexual harm prevention orders and sexual risk orders. These are orders that can be imposed either when someone has been convicted or when uh, they, uh, if there, there hasn't been a conviction at all in the um, case of sexual risk orders. These orders help the police to manage these uh, sexual offenders and, and we're going to make these orders even tougher. So we're going to require, for example, where appropriate, that offenders have to undertake positive requirements as part of the order. So there's a huge amount of work going on on this because we absolutely understand and recognise public concern about this and we want to deal with it. Um, you're, you're the safeguarding minister, you will, will know these figures, but if you're a police officer accused of domestic violence, you're less likely to be convicted compared to the general population. Around 3.9% of, of police officers are convicted compared to around... 6.2% of, of those in the general population. I mean, some would say that both of sets of those figures are pretty low. Do, do you think the police, as it is at the moment, should be investigating their own? Do you think we need changes there? Well, we have a, a, we've got a training programme called Domestic Abuse Matters, which is being rolled out across police forces, primarily to help them uh, support victims and investigate some of the most difficult domestic abuse crimes that exist. So um, we, we know, we long know that uh, people in the past have tended to think of domestic abuse as perhaps physical violence. Sadly, we know it is not restricted to physical violence and it can include coercive control and behaviour and the many, many forms in which that can be deployed. Uh, and what we have found is that as this training has been rolled out, not only have the uh, conviction rates in those force areas is very much improved but also that police officers themselves have either realized that they themselves are victims of domestic abuse or they are worried about their own behavior and so I've always said you know the bill this is a landmark piece of legislation I mean we in the bill itself um, we are We've responded to the concerns, for example, about the increase in non-fatal strangulation. We're prohibiting that in this bill. We've responded to the concerns about threats to use revenge porn. We've put that in the bill. Uh, and uh, we have um, responded to the concerns about uh, the so-called rough sex defence. These are all if, um, issues that affect women, not just in personal relationships, but in uh, uh, when they're out on dates and so on. And so what we've wanted with this bill is to really, really start a conversation about abusive behaviour and what we can do to support victims, but also to tackle perpetrators. And in, on the last matter, what we're doing is investing unprecedented amounts of money now in perpetrator programs because we want to stop that cycle of abuse. And so I think, you know, we really are at a turning point when it comes to the way in which we as a country are dealing with crimes that disproportionately affect women and girls. I think this week is a really significant uh, moment. I think that, you know, the experiences of women that have been expressed have been absolutely um, shocking. I think a lot of men have not quite realised what their loved ones, their sisters, their girlfriends, their, their wives have gone through. And I genuinely believe this could be a moment of change. Well, a lot of people would welcome that, certainly. I mean, let's, let's roll back to last night and the scenes we saw. Uh, there's been a, a lot of criticism of the policing, uh, also criticism of Cressida Dick, uh, the Lib Dems calling for her to go, Keir Starmer saying that the images are deeply disturbing. Um, just thinking of the Met and, and, and putting the Sarah Everard case aside uh, in terms of police, but, you know, we, we had that case not that long ago with police taking selfies of themselves with dead women's bodies. Do you, do you think Cressida Dick really needs to go now? 
Well, I, I, in terms of that incident, I mean, I, I think everyone was horrified by that, including uh, the Met Commissioner, and those officers were dealt with very quickly. Um, I, 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 look, I really, really want uh, to support the Home Secretary in her um, request to have a report from Cressida. Um, I, I, the, the, the police have got a tough job in policing the coronavirus pandemic uh, more generally at the moment. I think, you know, we... we time to be taking selfies of themselves, should they? If, you know, they're dealing with a pandemic, yeah, they're dealing with all of this. It just doesn't seem that their priorities are in the right place. They're in the right place. Well, I, if I may, I wouldn't want an entire... Um, the entire police force across the country, the 43 police forces, to be tarred with those incidents. Um, I, I, you know, the, the police officers I've had the pleasure of working with, not just as a as a minister, but in my previous role prosecuting criminals. Um, you know, that that is not behaviour that is um, that I've ever ever clearly um, witnessed. So, I, I, I just I, I think this morning. Given how difficult last night was, after what has been an incredibly upsetting week, I just I'm very keen that we don't preempt the fine you know, that, that report, uh, and that we we give uh, the Met Commissioner a chance to uh, explain what happened last night. So she, you uh, think she should explain? You think there is a potential that she may go? So the Home Secretary has asked for a report, so, uh, and I think that's appropriate. You know, the police are operationally independent, but it's right that they explain their, their actions to the Home Secretary, particularly in the very, very um, difficult circumstances of this week. So, um, you know, I think we've got to take this step by step this morning. And, and again, I'm just very conscious that for the family and friends of Sarah Everard, this is this is not what anyone uh, wanted and, and certainly uh, you know, people who took part in the virtual vigil, people who were there in peace, people who were laying their flowers, this is, this is not what any of us wanted and, and I, I very much hope that um, we, we will be talking about the um, much more positive steps that we can and will be taking to tackle violence against women and girls through the government survey uh, and other work.